Give us a little bit sir, more on the message you're trying to put across today with your guidance. Uh, you're guiding higher on full year revenue, uh, full year net profit, sorry, but the revenue guidance not so. So what is the overall message? How positive is the message you want to get across? No, overall, if you look upon, we're coming out in the first nine months with more than 9% growth, which is much higher than the markets. So first of all, we're growing markets here. We'll continue exceptionally strong growth in China with 26%. Adidas North America with 18% and online with 76%. So the key profit drivers, no, growth drivers for us, China, online and North America continues to be exceptionally strong. Europe is sluggish in a, an economy which is impacted by the Brexit. And I have to say that the Brexit is probably the most unwise business decision that's been taken for decades. But overall for Adidas, a very, very strong quarter and a very strong year 2018 for us as a company, but also hopefully for us and our investors. OK, let me ask you a little bit, unpack what you said there about Europe then, Casper. Uh, when are we going to see a return to growth in Western Europe? What kind of time horizon have you got for that? We expect to return to growth in Western Europe already next year. So we've seen a slowdown after the first quarter, which we said in April, that we would see a flattish Europe in 2018. And we expect Western Europe to come back to growth next year. We'll be more you know, you know, concrete with the numbers, but we believe that we'll see a normalized growth in Western Europe already next year. And how are you going to do that exactly? Is this down to the underlying economies improving? Is this down to you getting the right management and product in place? What is going to drive that return to growth? No, we don't think the economy will substantially change uh, next year. We have a number of very exciting products coming out next year. We've changed our management team. We believe we're doing the right things to get back to a sustainable growth rate in Europe to continue to the overall growth rate of our company. Because as you can see, we're doing ex exceptionally well pretty much all over the place except Europe. And we're certain and confident that we can change that in Europe also. You mentioned Brexit, Casper. You're clearly not a fan. What can you do to try and uh, tackle the headwinds? Uh, is this impacting business decisions at Adidas? No, it's in impacted investment decisions. We have, you know, we've had to make more investments in the UK with local warehousing. But we're saying clearly this is not a good business decision for Western Europe because it's not only Brexit, it is taking the entire Western European economy down in a negative way. So we have to look upon it in that context. But at the same time, Western Europe accounts for 29% of our global revenue. We are seeing the growth drivers being China, being North America, and being online. So for Adidas, strategically long term, it's a nuisance, but it's not a strategic problem for us. OK, let me ask you a bit about some of those areas where you see more growth than Casper. And the United States is one. You've made some real headway, stealing market share from rivals in the US. Um, Nike, though, something of a resurgence taking place there, gaining momentum, some of our analysts or some analysts saying, is this going to be something that's going to challenge your North American business at the end of this year and into next? No, I think that overall we have a healthy competitive market space also in North America and it's up to really to us to make certain that we bring new cool products into the marketplace and we will do so. So we expect to continue to grab market share also in the following year in North America. The guidance will give in, in March but you know competition has never been gone. It's there and it's ours, you know, you know, it's our obligation to make certain that we have the right products in the right channels in North America. And with partners like Dix or Foot Locker or Coles or our online business we believe that we have so. And we invested very heavily in marketing assets in North America, like the MLS, you know, or very cool basketball players like James Harden. Uh, you've talked about China and uh, downplayed the impact of tariffs in the past, Casper. Is this something that you can continue to, to, to disregard, if you like? Does it continue to not have too much of an impact on your business, the trade tensions between the US and China? At this stage, it has had very limited impact. You know, the Chinese economy is still going very strongly. So, so far, it has not had a fundamental impact uh, on our business. And most of our products that goes to North America are not manufactured in China. So, so far, we've not been impacted on it. And we also have to be a bit humble. You know, we produce T-shirts and sneakers, probably the best sneakers in the world. But politics has a limited impact on the sporting goods industry. And, and with the, the Chinese story still in mind, Casper, what kind of strength or weakness do you see in the Chinese consumer at the moment? Though the Chinese continue, the Chinese economy continue to expand. They're bringing more consumers into the, the middle class. They'll continue to want to buy 
Western products, and we are one of the products that are very highly sought after in China. We have 11,500 11 stores in China. We continue to build our infrastructure. We're doubling the size of our headquarter in China, and we're building a digital center in China. So we're heavily investing into the Chinese consumer because the Chinese consumer is also the most digital consumer in the world. 50% of all pay in our stores in China is mobile pay. That is the highest ratio in the world. Okay, you've got some big targets around e-commerce, Casper. Where, where is the growth going to come from then, geographically in e-commerce? You're targeting, I think, $4 billion in sales by 2020 through that channel. Whereabouts in the world is that coming from? As you can see, in the third quarter, we grew 76%. And the biggest growth rates we're going to get from China and America again. Europe will con contribute, but the really big growth rates are coming from those two countries. Um, and then we launched earlier this year the Adidas app, where you can buy our products online and get cool experiences online. And that has had more than 5 million downloads so far this year. So it is going to be the US and China and, of course, driven by our app.